Hey guys, Dave Troop here. Second episode of the Snapshots interview series. I'm joined by Jacob Arcanum Santos from Noble Black. So how's it going, dude? It's going pretty good, man. Pretty pumped at this new announcement of uh, the prize increase of finals to 100K. Yeah, so, it's and... a legit tournament, more like the old school MLG National Championships, right? Exactly. Not as much money. Still, it's nice. Nice. So, um, well, I guess we'll get right into it again for anybody who missed the first episode. It, this is just going to cover the player's entire career from start to finish. Um, from start to now, I guess, still going on. Uh, so we'll get right into it. So how did you start playing video games? Like, very, very earliest, like, how did you get into gaming? And we're, we're digging into the way past. Um, <laughs> from what I remember, I started gaming, honestly, on Sega Genesis, I think. My older brother, uh, Louis, played Mortal Kombat a lot, and I think that's what, started, that's what got me started. I would play that with him. I'd go to my cousin's house to play Super Nintendo, Things like that. Nothing like competitive, you know. I was just casual, but uh, I've always had an infatuation with with gaming in general, you know, video games, that kind of thing. So it started when I was that's that probably like when I was like three. And I'm 22 now, so <laughs> the long ass time. Had two decades. Oh so, yeah. So then, how did you move make the transition? Like, did you play like shooters before Halo, or was Halo like the first shooter you played and got into? That's a good question. Um, I made we made I made that transition because of my my other siblings, uh, my step siblings. We uh, grew up playing uh, like you know competing in, like Mario Party, just just yeah, yeah. no shooting games or anything like that, but <laughs> semi competitive games at the time when you're that young. But uh, Golden I was probably Golden and Turok were my two first shooters, and uh, I was I took those pretty seriously. My older brother, he's like uh, I guess like eight years older than me or something like that. He would just whip our ass all day on Golden Eye, and, and I would just do my best to, because I wanted to beat him so bad. Yeah. But, I mean, it turns out now I, I'm the one that's a professional, you know, console FPS player. <laughs> so, it's pretty. It's, it's funny yeah. how that works out. Uh, so yeah, Golden Eye was a that's like a classic. So then, how did you get into Halo itself? Like, did you start playing right away with Halo CE? The friend who showed you was your brother again. Yeah, it was uh, it was my my older brother again. Um, not Louis, but my older brother Jamal. We got uh, an Xbox for Christmas, I think it was, and then he he won and he heard about Halo. Yeah. He was like, "There's this new sick game out. It's got like the best graphics I've ever seen." And so he got it, and uh, we ran uh, campaign like all the time. We would never really play multiplayer. Occasionally, we do one v ones, and I get smacked. But we played a lot of campaign, and like we, we just had a great time. And I was my my thing was just always keeping up with him, and uh, he would set little challenges for us to do. So it was fun. So did he play, did he ever play, like, the, the games competitively? Like, once you found out about the competitive scene, found out, like, how did you get into the competitive scene? Did he play? Good question. Um, he actually moved out of the house before I started competing and getting into the competitive aspect of Halo. So uh, I got in Halo 2 and started playing Xbox Live because all, um, all my siblings basically were out of the house. They were all around my age, but, you know, we have uh, different parents because they, they went to go live with their mom. So uh, I was in the house, you know, the last kid in the house, just like, what the hell do I do? So I played a shit ton of Halo 2, and uh, just, you know, the whole ranking system is what, what got, what made it competitive for me. I wanted to be a higher level than everyone else, I wanted to be better than everyone else, and uh, it wasn't until, I think, late 06 that I found out about MLG, and started playing a lot of customs and grinding that, and then I got into real competitive Halo. Yeah. So how did you, like, what was the highest level you got to in Halo 2? Like, what... Halo 2. Um, the highest level I got to was a 46 in Team Slayer, and I got to, uh, I had some good levels. I had 46 in Team Slayer, 44 in doubles. Um, I had like a, I think it was like a 41 in hardcore. Oh damn! I, I was I was a playlist kid for a while, and then in customs, like all I did was play free for alls, and I would go weeks without losing a free for all. Really? Mm. That's pretty cool. So did you play? Did you play in the Rumble Pit on on, uh, on Xbox Live? Because that was like. It was pretty competitive near the top of the ladder, right? You had, like, Ship One and Ninja and all yep. these guys who were just incredible. But were you playing with those guys on a regular basis? Um, I mean, I've matched against Ship One, I think, a couple times. Um, I won. I never really lost Rumble Pit games until unless I got modded. There was one time I got modded, and I was, it was for my level 42 game in Rumble Pit. Before oh. they, uh, I, rem I remember all of them getting rid of Rumble Pit. For my 42 game, I got modded, and somehow... Uh, I almost won it, but I lost by like a kill. <laughs> he was probably the worst mod I ever played in my life. I don't, I don't ever remember running into Ninja though. Oh, yeah, he did. He told me he was a pretty high level in that too. Um, maybe he went by something slightly different. Then, not entirely. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, the modding at those high levels, the modding in the bridge is a little bit ridiculous. It kind of oh yeah, uh, it's insane. You've got standby in every other game. Like I wasn't as high a level as I were. I I encountered my fair share of cheaters. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was brutal. It was brutal. Yeah, it's not surprising. So then you said you got into it at the end of 06, but you never you didn't really attend an event until 07. It was uh, Orlando 07, was it? Your first event? No, my first event was actually a Charlotte 07. Oh, okay. uh, Yeah, I had actually just, I had stopped playing. I intended to play football in high school, and uh, randomly I get online one day after not playing any Halo or Xbox for like a month, and uh, my buddy Hunter JJX uh, hit me up and was like, hey, I'm going to Charlotte. Um, you're still really sick. You know, you should see if you can come. I mean, it's an MLG tournament. It's huge. It's a sick experience. And I begged my parents to basically let me go so that it was last minute. Like, literally, I think it was like five days before Charlotte. And then my mom was like, all right, screw it, whatever. We'll do it. But this is it. Like, one and the one and done. Have fun. You know, you have your experience, whatever. So we went and... Um, <laughs> so much fun. Charlotte, oh, yeah. It, it was, yeah. I know, right? Look at me now. Years later. <laughs> It, it, that was a good event. It, I was able to keep gaming really because you know, I still had that talent, that raw talent. And when I was playing in free for alls, I would have crowds of kids that I didn't even know who the hell they were, just watching me, following me around. And then my next station is watching me play, pull off insane double shots and stuff. And my mom was like, "Holy shit, my son is really good." If all these kids are watching him, and so that's how that kind of went. Okay. Um. So, so what did you get at Charlotte, like? <clears throat> mm, Charlotte didn't do that good. Um, Charlotte, I think I got like eighth round free for all and losers. It ended at like two a.m. and I wasn't used to staying up that late, so I just started to play really, really bad. Um, and then in fours, we got like fifth round or something. It was not good, <laughs> not good at all. But it was an awesome first tournament, and uh, you know, going with who someone who I consider my older brother. Who's family to me? You know, he just got married, and I sent him wedding gifts and stuff like that. Like he's family to me, so going with him is, is a great memory to me. Oh, awesome! <clears throat> okay, so the first event was uh, Orlando. Like the not your first one, but your first um, major one, I guess you could say, uh, where mm -hmm. you did really well. It was Orlando. Mm -hmm. You got top thirty-two, and um, or top twenty-four, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. I, there was Dallas, and then there was Orlando. I placed at both. In fours and in at Orlando we got top twenty four, and in um, free for all I had gotten like a tenth I think. Oh wow! Actually, after that I had enough points in free for all to at that time you could get pro status in free for all, and I would have had pro status going into Vegas, but I never went to Vegas, so <laughs> I didn't have the pro status going into the 08 season. That's so fun. But, um, yeah, because I mean, from this point on, correct me if I'm wrong, but you never placed outside of the top thirty two, right? Like once yeah. you broke into that bracket, you never. Yeah. Never went out of it again. Never. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, so let's talk a bit about this first Orlando team because I think you you stayed with them for the Arsony changed his name to Arsonist, right? But then you were yeah. playing with um, actually my buddy Alumni and then Devious. Yep. Um, so how like did you get? What were your expectations going in? Did you think you could win? Like, did you think you'd get top sixteen? Did you think you'd get top thirty two? Like, were you just hoping to get into top thirty two? Like, what what were your like realistic expectations heading yeah. into that? The realistic expectations were definitely somewhere between top 12 and top 16. You know, I knew in terms of talent, we could, you know, break into top eight, but it was just a matter of experience. Uh, obviously, it's not the best mentality to go into, but I was young and experienced, and I knew that I had a lot to learn. But uh, I always had a positive mentality, so I was like, all right, you know, I would be really happy if we got top 16, but I know we can do better, so let's push for more. You know what I mean? So you thought you could have done even better? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Did you guys, like, get knocked out? Because I remember back then, too, the, the pro bracket seeding was really messed up, right? Like, when you were 32nd, mm -hmm. you would get first. Like, you would have to play final boss first round. Yeah. So you were we had, yeah, continue. Uh, so I was saying you're basically going through the, the pro bracket with only one real – only it's only basically single elimination because if you're a semi-pro team, you're going to get crapped on by final boss or target or something. Oh, yeah. We ended up playing nice like Rice, I, if I remember correctly, and that was a, that was a nasty team at the time. We got uh, – 3-1. They were pretty good games, to be honest. They were good games, but we lost series pretty bad overall. So, you know, and I forget what seed they were at the time. It was so long ago. But so, <laughs> some, so those are some big name players, and definitely um, in terms of Halo history, they, they made they made impacts. Yeah. Um, okay, so then just touching on what we just uh, talked about a second earlier, like you've never, you've never really placed outside the top 32. But until 
very, very recently, you also hadn't really managed to breach, like, now now on Noble, which we'll get to later, you know, you're on a, like a, a team that has really strong, like, a contender to win tournaments. That's not, yeah. a, that's not a joke. But up until this point, you were kind of more in the middle of the pack um, mm -hmm. as a pro player. So if somebody were looking at just your stats, they might say, oh, like, Arcanum, um, average pro player. Would you disagree, agree? Um, is it unfair to say that simply based on standings? Do you think your play is higher than your ability to place the tournaments? Definitely unfair to say that, but that's just the way, you know, you know it, it, perception is reality, ultimately. So when people see those statistics in terms of my placings, they're like, oh, he must be, you know, average. Uh, little do they know, the, those teams that were formed were unpracticed. Um, you know, I didn't make the best team decisions. I didn't grant myself opportunities. I didn't build networks. Like, when you're trying to get to the top of the pack of being a professional player, whether it's Call of Duty or Halo, you have to understand it's a, it's, you're building a network. You need to be friends with as many people as you can, get to know as many people as you can, and be willing to put yourself out there. Because if you have the talent, that's great. But if you have the talent and don't know people, nobody's going to give you the chance. So it's def it, it would be unfair because I've always had the talent. And, and you know there's always been ways to improve, of course, but I've always had the ability to be at the top of the pack. It was just a matter of could I get the right team and people around me that, would, that I would feed off of and that would feed off of me and that we would – you know, work together and be able to win. Yeah, because uh, this is such a synergistic game, right? And it's all about exactly. the four shot and team shot, rather. Um, so, so you basically think that you could have been like a top player for longer. You just didn't set up the situation, never got set up properly for you. Yeah, um, more so now that I've matured and I've gotten a lot more experience, it would be more that I didn't allow myself the opportunity. I mean, there was they, they, people knew I was good. I mean, I talked to you know former pro players like SK and stuff like that back in the day, and they were like, "Yeah, honestly, we considered you know giving you a chance that shot, but it was a matter of you know at the time some politics with points and stuff like that." So people acknowledged me, but they were always looking for me to push myself out there, and I just never did that. So um, it was I guess it's a little bit of both, if I could put it that way. Er is there a reason that you, um, like, is there a reason that you never pushed yourself out? Like, were you self-conscious? Did you not think, was there a little doubt in your mind that maybe I'm not, you know, like, was, or was it just not, not knowing that you should be networking, not understanding? Mainly just not knowing <laughs> I should be networking. You know, I didn't want to, I was like, you know what, screw that. If I don't want to just go out there and work mass off to get to know someone, if they want to get to know me, they'll get to know me. If they think I'm good, they'll ask me to team. You know, I kind of thought things would just come to me and I just enjoyed playing the game and competing, which, you know, this being a, a business type thing was definitely not the best way to look at it. But <laughs> it's like, it's a learning experience. You know, I'm here now, I know what it takes. I know what it takes now, and that's why I'm, I am where I am. Yeah, well, I mean, back then, I guess everybody was kind of a kid, too, right? Like, oh, yeah, 100%. Everybody was so young and immature, and there was a whole bunch of nonsense going around. When you look at some of those old videos, it's like, wow, it's hard to believe, like, 15 and doing this stuff, 16. Um, so it took you till about 2000. We'll go. We'll kind of skip a little bit forward into the Halo 3. This is when I first started to, like, really hear your name uh, come mm -hmm. up. Um, I was a playlist warrior in Halo 3, so I got shit on by you plenty of times. But <laughs> <laughs> um, So this was the first event, like in 2009 is when you really broke through. You got a top eight finish, finally, on Ambush, right? With uh, Fear, Nexus, and... Hmm. Oh, that was actually... Uh, right? That placing was actually top eight in, in Amateur bracket, so that's like technically top 24. Oh, uh, I, I know where you're reading that placing, and that's yeah. why I know what you're talking about. Never, I didn't get into the top eight till 2011, unfortunately. Oh, really? But my okay. placing at that time was uh, was ninth, or yeah, it was around ninth, ninth or tenth. Okay, so then because you had placed, because um, then yeah, you you guys switched up a teammate, and I was gonna say what kind of happened there, but I guess. Oh, you no, I mean, I I can answer that question. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, what happened between those two tournaments? Because you guys switched um, here for Tetra Shot, was it? So we were. Yeah, we were supposed to have fear, but fear flaked out on us for the tournament prior, which I think was San Diego. Oh was that God. it? Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was a Cali event. I know that, but fear legit like flaked out, just didn't get on his flight. Really, and and screwed us over. And we were we were actually really good. We had good chemistry, and then going into the next tournament, obviously, you know, we didn't practice as much, and the chemistry was a little faltered because we didn't trust fear anymore. And then, yeah, you know, we got a shitty. We got a. Like top 16, top 24 finish, which is not acceptable. 
Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of interesting to see that you hold yourself to such a high standard, even though at the time you hadn't really. Um, I mean, obviously now talking to you that you've gotten a second place and you're on a mm. team that's a contender, it makes sense that a top 16 finish to you seems un, unacceptable. Mm. But to have yeah. that mentality at the time, um, I guess that shows kind of why you've gotten to where you are now. Yep. Um, so the end of Halo 3, the start of Reach, like that 2010, 2011, up until, up until like right this period, that was probably the best two years of your career. I mean, you were consistently yep. in the top 16. Um, always. So what was it about? Was it just, had you finally found some people that you could trust? Was had the networking thing finally started to pay off a little bit? Or was it just land experience? Or what was it that you think allowed you to be so successful with the students? Experience would be a big one. Um, and I did find people that I meshed, I meshed better with and that I not only got along with in game, because I get along with almost everybody, you know, out of the game and in game, but I really worked well with in game. Um, and in, I believe it was, uh, yeah, when I got that seventh place finish in 2011, I was with Rust, Dursky, and uh, Royal 2. And, you know, Royal 2 is on CLG. Royal 2 is probably one of my favorite teammates ever. We brought him out and, you know, showcased him. And that was, that was a good time. It was definitely experience and some other things that helped me get that. Um so did was you, were you having problems with like land jitters and stuff before that? Like, did it did you play differently at home compared to at a tournament? Because I know that's something um, that is big for a lot of people in esports that you get up on mm -hmm. the stage and it's you know you're not wearing your socks, you don't have your little pillow that you're sitting on or the little table that you put your foot on or whatever it is mm -hmm. that makes you comfortable. Uh, was that like affecting your play? Do you think up until that point, or do you think you were performing at the top of your game all, most of the time? Um, I never really got jitters that were detrimental. Um, I always like to identify it like where when you get nervous, you know, it's it's because you're passionate about something. So I would get nervous, but I would get nervous because I was excited to play, and I would always play better because of those nerves, the adrenaline rush, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so at the time, I was, you know, every tournament I was at the top of my game, maybe not past the peak of where I wanted to play, but I always played well. I don't think I ever played bad. Once I became a, a pro player and established myself as a pro player, I don't think I've ever played bad at a tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Um... No, I remember especially at the end of Halo Three, that team you had. A, you were on a few teams that were kind of making waves, and um, a few of them that were kind of starting to. Like a lot of your teammates from those eras ended up, and yourself now too, got kind of moved up to the highest, the highest echelons after that, right? Um, yeah. Areas you actually teamed with a, a, a local friend of mine, Piggy, for a year as well. Piggy. Yeah. Zach was good. He was good. <laughs> uh, he's, that, kid, that kid was ridiculous. He, was ridiculous. he used to destroy lands. Destroy lands. Um, um, so then Halo Reach, this was like, did you like this more than Halo 3? Was the game better for you um, in terms of like the way you could play it out? Or because uh, you, you did even, like Reach was probably your best title overall. Um, again, so was that just experience or was there something about Reach that let you be more successful than Halo 3? Experience, um, you know, better teams, uh, the shot style and the whole, I mean, I, one one could say I'm better with sprint. I don't think that's the case because I'm pretty damn good at H2A. Uh, and I've, you know, that experience with that. But no, I, I learned how to be, uh, I guess, nerdy. Reach taught me how to be nerdy, and that was a big part of my gameplay I was lacking. It taught me how to be nerdy, how to improve my execution, and, and I really, it, it advanced the way I thought about Halo, and the way I thought about Halo changing is what made me play so much better because my shot was, you know, per, I did, I don't really quote-unquote miss, and so I would pull off crazy stuff, but it was mainly, you know, my my map movement, uh, my routes, when I'm staying alive, when I'm doing so, just things like that, the minute details that make Halo so intricate, and Reach kind of uh, taught me how to be better at that, especially because I grinded it a lot more. So. Okay. So you actually played a lot more uh, Reach than Halo 3, for example? Um, I would, I would say, not overall, but I would say... Um, at the beginning of Reach, I put so much time in in, in such a small period of time that it really benefited me in, in that regard. So I've, okay. I've gamed a lot. I've been known to be a quote-unquote grinder. <laughs> I like the game. Well, that's, uh, that's important. That's pretty much the main way you get better is just by playing a lot. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. If you're, I mean, if you're not going to be analyzing, if you're not analyzing yourself, then well, right? Like, it's kind of, you're not going to be the one to put the blame on yourself. Uh, but that's that's really that's kind of like, cool to hear that you have that kind of mentality. And I'm going to get into a little bit more about that, um, like the things you mentioned about thinking about the game in a little bit. Uh, first, I just want to move on. to, Did you play Halo Four? I couldn't find anything from. Did you Did you play it all? No, nah, actually, uh, 
there's a couple periods where I almost I like just quit to move on. You know, I almost quit before Reach because I was in college and I was like, you know, screw it, I'll focus on college. I came back and played Reach. After <laughs> Reach, when Halo Four came out, I was so frustrated with the way Halo Four was and just where I was at that I was like, you know, what? I'm not gonna play this. I just didn't bother competing when it. When Halo got dropped from LG, it just made me not want to compete even more, and I uh, just focused on other things. But um, the one turn I did go to was RTX, okay. and I won that with Ryan Noob, uh, straight sick and shooter. Oh, so you you actually won the tournament? Yeah, the tournament victory. Yeah, yeah but it, it's controversial. Some people, a lot of people, don't really count it. Yeah, well, why not? <laughs> uh, honestly, it's, it would be because not all the top teams were there, even though Ambush. You know, formal Heinz, APG, Lethal were held as you know the best Halo Four team in Halo Four, and they were there, and the, we're the last team to technically beat Formal in Halo. Interesting. Um, so, you, do you like what did you end up doing during those years, or during that year or two? I guess. Um, if, yeah. What, what did you spend your time on when kind of Halo vanished? Did you get into another esport? Did you just focus on life? Like, what? What did you? Um. Uh, I definitely did not play a lot of Xbox. It was a period of personal growth for me. I dabbled in Battlefield 4. I was at the top of that for a little bit, but I'd never competed in it. I just kind of played it just because I enjoyed it. Um, and then I completely stopped playing Xbox for like a year and a half and was just working, partying, and really finding myself, I guess one would say. Uh, I tried a lot of different things. I've done a lot of self-studying, you know, on like just business and just really trying to figure out what I, what I, what, what drives me? What stimulates me? And how can I grow as a person in, in all aspects? And so that's kind of where my journey went. Uh, I wanted to go into the Marine Corps. That didn't work out in my favor. I figured out, and I've gone through the process of trying to be a firefighter, so I want to do that. But that those are these things that I found out that I wanted to do and didn't want to do over, you know, working and meeting people and just real-life experience and expanding my horizons, really. So do you think that helped you when you came back to Halo, like taking all that time, do you think that made you a better player in a sense? Definitely. It definitely made me a better player because it, like, I know, like, I, I guess I know more of what it takes because it, it, at the end of the day, it's business, it's relationships. You, the only way you're going to learn about that is by going out and, and doing, you know, building relationships. And so uh, my ability to do that has been much better since I've came back and my understanding of how to market myself in business is much better. So I think uh, it's benefited me greatly. That's good to hear that the uh, the little hiatus was actually um, good for you. Oh, and I lifted a lot. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to throw that in there. I had to throw it in there. Stay Jack. Might as well. Might as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, wearing the wife beater looks good. So. <laughs> um, so I guess let's we'll kind of go into some uh, before we get into the H two A stuff. We'll just ask you a few things kind of over the course of your career. So, mm -hmm. um, like alumni, he was one of your first teammates. You team with him a lot. Yeah, I've seen you. You kind of come back to him guys kind of re find each other again is there like a reason for this or are you guys just really good friends is it that you guys play the game together a lot or you synergize really well like what what is it about him in particular that brings you back to you? good friends in history that was the reason i teamed with him so often and and at the time like i said i wasn't very good at expanding you know my network so i didn't get into the other quote-unquote clicks that is that it is to be among you know other halo pros so that's why i teamed with him a lot but uh, as you can see, we never really had that success together, so we didn't work that well yeah. somewhere. Something must have been slightly off. So when did you think that you, you really did figure out how to do all this networking, get into those, like, break into those other clicks? Like, how did you, when and how did you, did you would you say that you did that? When and how? Um, I guess come when I came back. When I came back and, and, you know, I was looking for a team for RTX, you know, I never really conversed with Ryan Noob that much, and now he's a, a really good personal friend. Same thing with Straight Sick. And the people I'd never conversed with, uh, I began conversing with frequently simply because I didn't know anybody coming back to Halo. Like, all these Halo 4 kids were quote-unquote Halo 4 kids. I don't like putting labels, but that's what it is right now. Um, <laughs> I didn't really know any of them, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. what better way than to just kind of get to know everyone? And I, I, I kind of looked at it the same way with my fellow pro Halo players. Like, I didn't really know them either and i was playing with them and competing with them for years so what's that say it means that i you know i should probably do some learning and <laughs> that's that's how that's kind of how it started it's definitely more of a recent thing but here we are that's cool um so also going through your history you've teamed with like a lot of really 
like you've teamed with some really like big names like neighbor captain anarchy who's probably one of the longest standing pro career out of it uh royal two now obviously best man and clutch and all, all these guys so who do you think was your best teammate like who's the person that um out of anybody you would have to drop that team with them again and who do you think taught you the most about the did anybody like when you team with them like really help you grow as a player Royal 2, I would definitely team with at the drop of a dime. I just love teaming with Matt. You know, he's a great friend, and he's just an absolutely disgusting player. Love him to death. Um, but in terms of who helped me grow as a player, Ryan Oop. Ryan really helped me grow as a player just because he makes the game easier. Like, he's so good at doing what needs to be done, and when you're teaming with him, he teaches you how to get things done. You know, I mean, he doesn't necessarily teach you how to be nerdy, but he kind of changes the way you think about the game. You know, I mean, he really helps you on where you need to do better. He's very critical, which I like because when I'm when I get that constructive criticism, I improve instantly. But when people don't open up their mouths, it's kind of hard to get better because people are gonna on the outside are gonna see more than you will from just playing all day. You know what I mean? Because yeah, because subconsciously you're a little biased. So Ryan, you definitely helped me improve my gameplay the most. Okay, interesting. Um... But just from the sounds of this, you sound like a very like analytical type of guy, um, kind of like really thinks about the game. So do you do you play it based on like do you have set strategies for every map and game type in your mind? Do you play them? Do you play them more based on feel? Like when you play, are you playing like this is where I should be? This is the position. This is the setup I want to get into. Or are you kind of just playing the game on momentum and so many accumulated hours? That you um, I would say. Not necessarily strategies, but I like to call them concepts. Each map has in, in Halo has a different feel to it. It has it has a different, uh, I guess, theory of how of, of the best way to play it based off of spawns, you know, weapon times, where weapons are positioned, things like that. Um, so I think about it in in terms of a general concept of how a map can be played and how it should be played, and then the rest of it's a lot of a lot of feeling because you know I have to match what my team wants to do. You know, each yeah. team that, that that's built is going to be a little different, and it's it's up to us as a team to figure out what our play style is. And you're only going to know what to do in game based off of communication and chemistry, and then that that in itself is is the feeling of the game. So concept plus feel, I'd say, is how I figure is how I plus accumulated hours can't can't leave that one out. Yeah, that's that's instrumental. Um, do you think that like are you the the, the strategical mind on your team right now, like on Mobile Black, or is it, who, who comes up with like your setups, your, would that be you, or do you have somebody else? Um, we, we're kind of good at talking about um, where we like to hold things down. Uh, it's, it's pretty basic amongst a lot of teams, it's very similar types of uh, positioning into when you're at a standoff or something like that. But um, I would say I'm definitely the one that notices openings most often. I know I'm the fastest to realize when we need to push. I'm the fastest to realize when we can get a flank or anything like that. Um, I'm the one that really is calling out spawns uh, vocally and, and making sure we're trying to stay aware of spawns. So I guess in that sense, that would be what I do in terms of uh, you know strategies and coming up with stuff. But as a whole, we, we're very good at talking about what we're good at as a team and where we need to do things better and how we can position ourselves better. So you're like the in game, like an in game leader type thing, like take control of everything yeah. once the game starts. How much time do you guys spend? Do you or do your teammates spend like conceptualizing the game outside of it? Like how much time do you spend like thinking like, oh, I wonder if I was here and he was here and this guy was here and we'd have perfect vision or control over this map? Like, do you spend a lot of time going over that, or does anybody in your team spend a lot of time going over that sort of stuff in their head? It's probably just me. Honestly, it's probably just me. We don't like to, the team, we have this thing where we don't like to um, nitpick. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to get better by nitpicking things and going and chipping at the same thing over and over. You're going to get better by looking at the general ideas of, of what's going wrong and where you need to do that better. But me, I like to watch film because you can learn a lot from film. So whenever we're done scrimming, whether we win or lose, I like to skim through films and I always watch it in third person to see positioning and, and where we're lacking. If you can, so it's very easy when you're watching films to see who's not listening, um, who's kind of thinking about making their own superstar plays or something like that. It's very easy to see those kinds of things. And, and it's easy to see where your awareness is lacking. So I like to conceptualize um, films after scrims a lot. So probably a couple hours every, every other day, I guess. That's a lot of time. Do you have a... Um... Like, I saw that you guys were looking for a coach for Gamers for Giving. Do you guys have a coach or an analyst for now? Or um, do, you, do you really believe that that, that 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 helps? Because I know in Halo before we had coaches, but they were more like uh, timekeepers. 
I guess, would be the way to – like in Halo 3 especially, that's what I – that was my general sense of what a coach's role was. It was more of like a time keep track of the weapon spawns, the power up spawns, all that sort of stuff. Um, do you believe in having like a coach or an analyst or like a fifth analytical mind that can help you go over the game um, and help you like conceptualize strategies and point out weaknesses in your in your team play? Or and did you guys find one for Gamers Forgiving? Well, I'll start off with uh, with the last part. We have not found a coach for Gamers Forgiving. We had people that we were looking at. Clutch was one. Um, but he can't make it out simply because of, of just funds. Um, another friend of mine, Obi, who's uh, who is actually a an old competitive player, uh, is another one that I thought about. But the same thing, funds. We're we're looking and we're thinking about it, and I believe that a coach can be very beneficial because when the team, when players aren't necessarily used to timing things, you know, consistently, it kind of puts a weight off their shoulders when someone else is doing it. And it's much better to have a coach doing it as opposed to one person in game having all the way on their shoulders timing things. Like, like for instance, on, on this team, we have a problem with timing camos on Warlord. We're getting better at it, but I time most mostly every camo. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I just I just have to reiterate, hey, you know, say Mason or Aries got the camo. What time do you get camo? Give me an, like an approximate time. Like, and they'll give me an approximate time, and then I'll time it from there. If I didn't have to reiterate that, that's that's time that could have been spent calling something else out. So a coach is is good in regards of efficiency, and if they're an experienced coach, like say we picked up Clutch as our coach, you know he's he's a, a veteran player, he knows what it takes to win, he's someone that can can help you realize openings much faster. You know what I mean? Because he's been he's played for so long, and he's he was a top player for so long. So not only can he help you time things and it'll make it easier to time things, but he can make your gameplay as a team much more efficient, especially because he's such a good friend. Same thing with Diesel. That's why Diesel's known as, like, the best coach in, in gaming. And Towie, same thing. In Halo, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> you might have a few uh, Korean coaches in, in League. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're bosses. They're, they're, that's, <laughs> that's a different story. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, that's kind of cool to hear. Do you think that... Uh, do you think that for a coach or an analyst to be effective, because this is kind of a huge debate in League of Legends right now, do you think that the, the guy has to have been an ex-pro player? Or do you think he could be somebody who just watches a ton of Halo or studies a ton of competitive Halo and understands it um, on a conceptual level, but maybe doesn't have the motor skills or the whatever to put it, like the hand-eye coordination necessarily mm -hmm. to be a top caliber player? Do you, do yeah, you think, it, yeah. it helps when they're a veteran player, but definitely not necessary. I mean, I'll go back to Diesel and Tawi. They, you know, played a little bit competitively, but they weren't top players or anything or anywhere close to it. I love them to death, but they, you know, that's just the way it is. But they understand the game, and they do. They still play it. You know, they have an, uh, an understanding of what it takes to win because they've watched, you know, the top teams play so much, and you know, they they understand the concepts. They they listen to how, what we talk about and things like that, so they know. And anybody can can really know. It's like it's like when you watch football. You're not a professional football player, but you may understand the plays if you watch football a lot. You'll understand what needs to be done at a time, where mistakes were made. It's just a matter of watching, analyzing, and then learning. And that's something that anybody's capable of doing. It's just who's dedicated to it is going to be who's good at it. And a lot of and it, and that's the hard thing to find. What 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 coaches have that ability? That's really cool to hear that you're that open-minded about it. And in the league community, there's a lot of pro players who are like, I'm better than you. Why would I listen to you about this? You know, it's like um, mm -hmm. a very arrogant almost mentality. Like, if I'm better than you, then there's nothing you not teach me anything. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of cool. Do you think that uh, Halo will develop the infrastructure, like uh, like further, like a, for, a, a coach, like a, a paid coaching position on Halo teams? Like, do you think that's going to be um, an actual thing? I don't know if that would ever be a thing, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. I mean, I'm, I'm one where I think that, or I believe, I shouldn't say think, I, I'd rather say believe, um, that closed-mindedness is, is not going to get you anywhere. That's why I choose to be open-minded. You know, because people who are closed-minded aren't going to win. Closed-minded doesn't win because closed-minded doesn't grow. You know what I mean? So it's those that are open-minded that are going to be able to create the most opportunities for themselves and, you know, their, you know the, the people in their environment. So I wouldn't say, I can't say whether it'll be a thing or not, but I'm not going to say it's not possible. Especially with the way, with the direction that Halo seems to be going with, like, Halo 5 and everything. Yeah. You never know at this point. There's just so many dynamics getting thrown in. Yeah, well, it's coming back. And actually, I mentioned this in the interview with Ninja, too, but eSports, um, KESPA, the Korean eSports League, actually has a seat on, like, the Korean Olympics Committee or whatever, and they've actually managed to get eSports into a Tier 2 Olympic sport, and they're trying to push for it to be 
tier one only gets four. So you could see it soon at the maybe not for another decade, but you could see it soon. Uh, esports, Halo, League of Legends, Counter Strike at the Olympics. Um, in which case, you almost certainly see that type of like coaching and infrastructure development oh, yeah. on there, right? Oh yeah, that would be sick. Yeah. Esports, esports is here to stay. Anybody that says esports isn't a thing is delusional. Because e- esports is here and it's not going anywhere. I can, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, our parents. Uh, actually, just to touch on that really quickly, when you brought that up about your, um, your first event in five days, like your, your, your mom or whoever let you go, that's, that was really cool of her to be like really supportive and said, you know what, like fine, you can go to this tournament. Like yeah. I remember when I wanted to go to tournaments, my biggest problem is that half the time my parents thought I was going to get like kidnapped or that you know like just a whole <laughs> bunch of crazy stuff they're like oh you can't go somewhere we don't know where you're going like um so that like have they really been supportive the whole time yep they've supported me the whole time and and of course there, there's always been those those ground rules of, of just certain things you know don't get too absorbed learn how to balance things but they've always been good at raising my siblings and i to um you know pursue what we want to pursue you know they they've been good and they've been really good at that and I appreciate that because they really support all of us and whatever we want to do wholeheartedly and their thing is always don't get too caught up in one thing make sure you have a lot of plans make sure you're 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 balanced in your life because balance balance is what's going to make everything happen so they've been very supportive of of my gaming career and every decision I've made in life so far that's really awesome to hear that your parents are really cool like that i mean that's not something that uh that's not something that a lot of people have. So when you have really supportive parents like that, I mean, that's that's really awesome to hear. Um, you need parents like that to kind of help create this scene, right? Because otherwise, the one, nobody would end up being allowed to go to tournaments. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so I guess we'll kind of go somewhat into uh, the present at the moment. Um, so you're, you you didn't go to Iron Games Columbus, correct? I did. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, okay, so how did you do there? Who did you go with? Uh, it was myself, Shooter, uh, Kill Relevant, and Omega. And we went as Annex Halo, and we did. We should have got top eight, but we failed and got top twelve, which is not acceptable because we were predicted to be able to get top six and top four. And it was a complete, complete fail. They're great players, though. It was just being uncomfortable with each other. Um, it was kind of last minute. It just wrong timing, I guess I would say. But they're all sick players, and shooters on Elevate now. Definitely one of. Um, he's a great personal friend of mine. Like I talk to him almost every day. And I think he's just a sick player too. Like that's that's someone with a lot of potential. So he's someone that I think people should look out for. But I did go to Columbus. Oh okay. Because um, yeah, I was just I was trying to find uh, information on Columbus. And I couldn't really, couldn't really find anything. So I'm sorry about that I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. It's all um, good. But then you went to UGC St. Louis. This I do know. Mm-hmm. And you yep. went with uh, Banda, Blaze, and Contra. Yeah, you got thirteenth. So just from talking to you, I already know that you—that's not you wanted to do better. Um, what oh, yeah. happened there? Um, well, we were supposed to have Predevinator instead of Randa, but Predevinator flaked out last minute due to some personal <laughs> things. And you know, honestly, I kind of wanted to skip St. Louis. I was this close to skipping St. Louis, but we worked it out that uh, we were able to pick up Randa last minute and uh, you know get get flights. Or I I because I needed my flight paid for, and I got my flight paid for. Things worked out well. Um, of course, we failed for top eight, which we shouldn't have, but it happens. We beat BTH. We ups- we, we made an upset, and we kind of put the, you know the name Noble Black, you know, out there. Well, we got a lot of love, and you know, I think they're all great players. Hmm. It just it just didn't work out because it was so last minute. Yeah, I mean, well, Contra's clearly like he's on Optic now, so yeah. clearly in, um, he's got some talent. Um, so who did like who did you get knocked out by? We got knocked out by uh, Elevate, actually. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, the first game was close. Second game was some restart BS, which the rules have changed, so I'm not going to dwell on it. Regardless, I still feel we should have won that series, but, you know, they played better than us at the time, and that's just what happened. We lost. So, and Elevate's the seventh seed right now, so cheers to them. Yeah, that's um, that's that's quite impressive. Because, uh, I mean, they're, they're not a bad team at all. They've been playing pretty well, um, especially considering that most of them are they're not, I mean, they're not from the old guard, right? Like, the majority of the players, when I look at the top eight, because um, I kind of took a break from Halo during Region 4. I wasn't really around the scene too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of the names I recognized, um, just from the Halo 3 days. And that, but the, uh, the Elevate guys are kind of new. I actually think I used to play with Gabriel before he was 
I'm not entirely sure on this, but I think it was the same game. Uh, but everybody else, I've never really seen that much. So, but they've kind of made a name for themselves. Do you think they have, like, as a new team, do you think they can compete at the highest, like, at the, at the upper echelons? Could they potentially win an event, do you think? Um, well, putting me on the spot here, but I'll just be straight <laughs> up. Um, right now, no, I don't think that they can compete at the very top yet, but they do have the potential because it's a matter of experience and, and whether they're willing to stay together and work on that chemistry. Like I said, I firmly believe Shooter is has the potential to be a top player and is, is definitely, I personally think he's the best on that team. Spartan's another great player with potential, but they're just not ready yet, I don't think. That's just what I see. Um and I, you know, that's just how that's just how it is. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like not not every team has a chance to. You, know, you can't say every team has a chance to legitimately win a tournament. Otherwise, what's the point of really, you know, ranking teams, discussing them? So no, exactly, I, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. That's that's kind of what what I thought of them too. Um, they they look like they might be able to. So now you're um, now with this noble black, uh, you have a really solid roster. Um, there's a little bit of drama though around the formation with APG, with getting APG and everything. Do you want to do you want to go over this a little bit? And tell uh, us? Yeah, sure. Why not? I, just, <laughs> I, I got asked this on stream the other day. I think it was like two days ago. Um, honestly, I, I didn't really want to make a team change at all. My intention was to kind of stick it out with Contra and uh, you know build up Contra because he's definitely got he has growing to do, and that's what that's what's that's what I like about him. He's already a really good player. And when he works on those things and he's working, he's just going to be that much better. But um, it came down to, after discussing it with Maniac and Aries, you know, how likely are we to are, are we to win? Do we think we can win? And we thought we could win, of course, but we wanted the best chance that we could get, and we all thought Bradley was that option. Um, I've always wanted to team with Brad. I've known him since, you know, Halo 2. I think he's a machine. He's a disgusting player. And um, his play style suits, suits us. It's an aggressive powerful and headstrong play style and he didn't mesh well with optic at all they didn't know how to play around apg but we feel like we are fundamentally better with apg and we feel like when it comes to you know land gameplay we're going to be a much much more dangerous team on land simply because of experience the fact that you know we're all friends and have known each other for a significant amount of time and chemistry between apg maniac apg aries you know, just, just in all aspects, we just felt that APG was the best chance at winning and creating something um, long-lasting. Yeah, well, he's, uh, he's been around the scene for a long time, like you said. He's definitely a character. Mm. He's an interesting guy. Oh, yeah. That's, that's <clears throat> why we made the change, though. We just felt like we would have our best chance at winning with, with him. Yeah, so you felt like he was an immediate upgrade, basically. The contract could be as good as him one day, could, but like at, at that exact moment in time, you felt like... For our team, yeah. I mean, look at Contra. He's um, honestly he's he works better for Optic than APG does, but that's yeah. his play style is entirely different, and that's why. Yeah, they looked uh, they looked pretty good last weekend. Uh, or I guess this is H this is right before HDS seven. This is the Saturday before. Mm -hmm. Just should, I don't know if it'll take a couple of days to get it. Every, every OB, my OBS has been acting really strange today, so I might have to OBS do some... OBS does it. It does that. <laughs> it does it to me too. It does it to all of us. <laughs> I might have to do some uh, miraculous video editing after this to get this one out in uh, perfect shape. So it'll probably be a couple of days. Um, so HCS7 will probably have happened. So I, I was talk referring to HCS6 there, um, so people don't get confused. All good. Um, okay, so you guys have done pretty well. Like since you picked up APG, I mean, I don't think it's like it's it's quite clear that you guys are a very strong team now. You've, you came second, then fourth. Um, so do, do you think like? Can you win now? Like, is is uh, are you gonna win tomorrow? Uh, HCS seven. Uh, we're 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 on track. Um, what I look for each time that we do scrim, even with Contra, um, was was growth. You know, with with Contra, we grew just not at a very spectacular rate. We kind of had the same subpar, um, I guess, performance on Warlord, which is our, our stigma map. And it was, that that sucks. Like when you're not growing and you're actually trying consistently, that's that's one reason why I was like, all right, Brad's got to be. You know, we got to make that change. And we and I've noticed every time we scrimmed, when we're giving, when we're actually trying and putting in that effort and not slacking, we do get better. And we're very good at fixing those kinks. And so I'm I'm definitely confident that we have the ability to win. Can we win? Will will we win? Who knows? Because it's all about who's going to show up at the time. But we're showing up to both these next two land tournaments. I can t I can say that right now. We're going to show up, especially in Boston, home territory for me. No way in hell I'm not winning. So 
Yeah, everyone needs to watch out. So, <laughs> calling out everybody, eh? Because um, hey, EG, interesting. <laughs> EG looked really good last weekend, though. I mean, they didn't drop a game. Do, do you think that's gonna like? Do you think that was like the level that they can maintain? Do you think that was kind of just they were really on point that one weekend? Um, they're meshing with Lethal finally. I, I told I was talked to Snipe down because they're they're probably our favorite team to scrim. We get along with TJ really well, Lethal, and, and just everyone on that team we're really close with. Um, and personally, right now, I think they're the best team, and, and they're, they're the best team. They're the most consistent. And the, the fact that they're finally meshing with TJ is huge because they didn't have that immediate chemistry that they did with Pistola. Now that TJ is finally, you know, they're, they're learning how to work with him. They're just that much scarier. On paper, that roster is a scary roster. Am I intimidated? No, but I'll admit, you know, that's a scary, all, all in all, with all the things that everyone on that team's done, that's a scary roster. So um, that's... I don't. I think that's just the tip of the iceberg of what they can do. But I also believe that once we do the same thing with APG, finish kind of meshing with them, that we're going to be that team to contend with them. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, you guys have all all strong personalities that allow you to, um, like, just from the limited things that I know. I know that you seem to all be very like confident in yourselves. Um, very like straightforward, like upfront type of people. So that's better for working out kinks with people who maybe are. Um, Passive, yeah, or, you know what I mean. They don't want to mm -hmm. say, "Oh, I don't want to offend him," so I'm not going to tell him that he did this wrong or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, is that kind of true for your team dynamic? Like, everybody's are you guys all cool with kind of like calling each other out on <laughs> on, on bullshit, but not not in like a, a mean way or whatever, but just like oh, <laughs> oh, we're we're cool about it. We're so cool that you'll hear on stream sometimes. <laughs> It's, it's the funniest thing. Maniac and APG will start talking shit to each other. And it's it's half serious, half real, but it's just that we've all been, we're all friends. So, like, we know it, it's it's meant in the best of ways, and we take it for what it is, but we just make a joke out of it. So we have fun with it, which is another thing I love about this team. We have fun with it, we even, and we playfully talk shit with each other, but it does help. You know, it does help because we take it serious and we do get better. Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. Um... Okay, so let's let's get into like a little bit of uh, just general Halo stuff for, um, for in the present. So, what what are your thoughts on the MCC in general? Like, I mean, I, I guess we'll skip the part where everybody complains about how broken the servers and the systems are for like ten yep. minutes. We'll, we'll just assume that you did that, and we'll just teleport ten minutes forward. <laughs> and then, so what That's are your good. thoughts on like the gameplay itself? Like, do you like the mechanics of it? Like the feel of the game? Like the um, like the kind of ridiculous long range on the battle rifle now and how accurate it is, like shots don't seem to drop. Like, what do you think about all, all like the gameplay core mechanics? Of the, uh, I think um, Halo 2 anniversaries, you know, at, in MCC, I, I, I love the game mechanics. I think the game mechanics are good. The nades to me can be a little janky. You know, it's like, like I'll be looking, I'll be like, all right, that nade should go really far and end up falling way short. I'm like, oh, that sucked. And, you know, that, so that, that's one thing I have a problem with. But all in all, the mechanics are good. I, it, it seriously is what Halo 4 should have been. You know what I mean, I think the range on the battle rifle is really good, and the hit, um, hit section is really good, especially when the connection is, um, you know, uh, an, a great host. You know what I mean? If it's a great host online, it makes it that much more fun. Um, I really wish there were more maps, and everyone wishes there were more maps to play it on. But it seriously is a great game overall, fun to play when for the competitive value of it. Yeah. Um, so do you think that they just really need to put Midship and Beaver Creek in that all of the day? They need something. They need that. They need, you know, a great forge map. They need some bleed through on the sniper. So that way oh, if yeah. someone's half shield, you know, they'll actually die instead of getting the shield taken off. Those three things, you know, not necessarily Beaver Creek and Midship, but just some new maps. We need just need more maps and it'll yeah. be that much better. Yeah. Have you seen any forge maps that really, that you really liked where you're like, why isn't this in yet? Like, yes. Uh, I know that there's going to be an addition next season, but I don't know. It's, I mean, I do know, but I can't say what what the map's going to be or, or what it's or what it's likely to be. I should say, because um, you know we've all skimmed through it and they asked us our input, so it's it should be a good map. It's a forge map. I would like some DLC, but who knows? We're we're not going to know anything for sure. Nothing's official until you know something actually happens and gets put in and announced. Yeah, that's it before anything um, before anything gets super official. Um, so, what was your um, uh, let's. What did you think about the Halo Five beta in general? That was. I thought it was awesome. It was smooth. It was fun. Um, you know, even with the minor bugs in it, it was just. It just. It was really great to have it as a beta, and it plays so well. 
you know, even with the ability, that first glance, you're like, damn, man, Halo's not traditional Halo anymore. Me, personally, I don't care, because, like I said, I'm, I'm open-minded, I'm all for evolution of gameplay and, and furthering, you know, a franchise. But, um, you know, at first glance, the abilities are a little intimidating because there's so many, and they're so versatile in the ways you can use them. And you can be really creative, but when you gave it a chance, you sat down, you played it for a long period of time, you experimented with all the abilities and really worked it into the game with you know the how the, how, the size of the Spartan in relation to the maps, everything, also everything in the environment fits what it's supposed to be. It fits the abilities. It's balanced. You know what I mean? And that's what I really like about it. It's balanced. There's some tweaks that can be made that uh, I know that's being tested on, but it's it's a great step for Halo. Regardless of whether people want to admit it or not, I'm. It, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be fantastic once the final version comes out. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing it. Do you um like what? How did you get? I'm assuming you were rated pro in it. What did, like? Do you know where you're at the very top? Um, um the, the thing about the ranking system is it was really dependent, I guess, on play time. And I played a decent amount of it, but I didn't play, you know too, too much to the point where, you know, I was getting like a 2300 rating on everything. I performed consistently, which is why I was able to stay at like, I think I was at like 2100, 2100 in almost every category ranked pro. Oh, okay. Like, so, I mean, that's cool. But, um, I think that needs to be tweaked. They need to, they need to make that harder. They need to make it more league-esque or, um, Call of Duty-esque with the ranking system on, on how that is. But I like the idea behind it. Yeah, they kind of lifted it from, they lifted like the ELO system almost from League of Legends. Yes. Uh, that's basically that's basically how I interpret it. Um, so, okay. Uh, have you looked at any, or sorry, let's go to, what, what was your favorite tournament you ever played at? Like one prime, like you had to pick one tournament, one tournament that you wouldn't have missed any amount of money. One tournament, uh, oh boy. I've been to so many. Let's see. Honestly, it would probably be Orlando, uh, 2011. I was on Triggers Down, me, neighbor, best man, Goofy. It was just a fun event overall. I got my best placing at an MLG tournament, which really isn't that great. It was sixth, but it was it was fun. And honestly, I it, it was so enjoyable because I played such phenomenal Halo. Like, I, I played some damn good Halo. I was really proud of myself that tournament with the plays that I made. And, um, you know, we barely lost to Warriors for top four by, like, a couple kills. And the, the whole event was just great. It was fun. I loved teaming with neighbor and best man. And, uh, and goofy, it, it was it was enjoyable. It was memorable. Um, and then RTX would be really really close too because it was like my return tournament to Halo, and I had just happened to win it. And it, it, that was another event that I don't think I'll ever forget. Yeah, not surprising. Winning winning a big tournament like that must be um, must be a pretty pretty cool feeling. Like oh, I'm actually the yeah. best person here. My yeah. team is the best team here. Like, up. Yep. <laughs> and, and it was just, it was so fun to win RTX with my with those guys too. Like they're all great. Like we we're all really close. Like I talk to them almost every day, every other day ish. And there's a lot of funny stories we could tell. We could we could talk about on RTX, but I'll leave, I'll say that for another time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like when you team with Neighbor, do you think he could still? Because I mean, he was one of the most prolific players in Halo. For, um, mm -hmm. Do you think he could still play if he had dedicated his time to being professional? Like do you think he? He still has it, or has he lost it, or has he just lost the passion for it? I know he, he works for three four three now, right? Yeah, neighbor will always have the, the the ability in terms of skill. It's it's just dedication. If a dedicated neighbor comes out to play, he's going to be disgusting. If if whimsical neighbor comes out, you know, <laughs> nothing. It's it's just going to be whimsical neighbor. He's not going to be as good. It's all depend on dedication with him. Okay. Just he's naturally just freaking good at Halo. Yeah. That, that nah, so that's just how it is. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely a very talented player. Um, so what was the favorite team you were ever on? Why? Favorite team I was ever on? Um, Swagger Like Us, me, Thrust, Dursky, Royal 2. That team was just a team of laughs. Like, funniest team I've ever been on. All those guys are just riots. Like, you, you if you watch Royal 2 stream, the things he says will, make, will literally make you question everything. It's just so it's just so funny. He's so genuinely funny. And hanging out with them, they're all we were all so close, and we had so many memories going to TLNs together and, and things like that. It was it was just a, like definitely the best time I've had on any team so over such a long period of time. You know, never had a dull moment with them. Never had a dull moment. That's awesome. Um, so there was just like a really friendly environment then. Just, oh yeah, I just had a blast. That's, oh yeah, that's great to hear because at the end of the day, I mean, money's great and everything. But this is kind of why we do this, right? Because 
way. So people exactly. are having a good time. That always I feel like that always makes you play better too when everybody's in a good mood and happy. Definitely. At least that's just my take on it. Um, so what was so your favorite okay, across all the halos, your favorite map, game type, and your favorite actual like which of one of your halos was the favorite, and then favorite like map from any game, and then your favorite game type. You can do a different map in a game. It's not to be. That's always so hard for me. Because I, I, I really do just love Halo for what it is, but it'd have to be between um, Halo 3 and Halo 2, classic. Yeah. Um, I'd probably roll with Halo 3 because that's where I focus more on 4s, and I really got to learn, you know, maps and gameplays better. That's where I just, I grew so much more in Halo 3 competitively. It definitely was a, was a little bit of a step up for me from Halo 2 Classic, but Halo 2 Classic, all the glitches made it fun. So Halo 3... Um, Map game type, so still Halo 3, it would have to be either Heretic Flag or Construct King. One of those two. It has to be one of those two. No, no Pit, eh? No, I Pit's too played out. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how, like, I played so much Pit, like, Pit was, Pit's great, it's fun, but it's very, I, it felt like it was just the same thing over and over. Oh, there's a guy sniping my sword, yay. Oh, there's a guy sniping on top of my turret, and they have our sniper in our sword. <laughs> well, we're screwed. You know, it's just one of those things, like, same thing over and over. I always felt like Construct King, you had the ability to be a little more um, versatile and creative, and uh, Heretic was kind of the same way. You can do some nerdy things there, and I think that that uh, really advances the, the viewership, and then uh, it's just fun gameplay. So when you say you referred to like nerdy a few times, like what what do you mean by that? What's your what's your definition of that for somebody who's completely definition of nerdy in Halo? Definition of nerdy is knowing small glitches, slide jumps, ghost ledges, um, and I even like to consider like a random flag pull, like in the most like spontaneous and then in creative way, like what Ryan Noob would do is classified as nerdy. You know, really, really just thinking outside the box of what. You know, competitive Halo is to most people. You know, really, really getting out there is 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 nerdy. <laughs> okay. Um. So, have have you ever looked at any other esports game? Like, do you follow any other esports? Um, yeah. I um. I guess I casually follow COD here and there, as I always have. Um. I was pretty close to like Proofy and them before uh, COD got big. Uh. So I I do watch that. Uh, I wish I understood League of Legends and stuff a bit better, and I, I'm going to dabble in uh, in Smite just so I can learn that genre better and be able to watch. Because I, I like esports, I support all esports. You know, of course, my passions in Halo, but I I, I want to understand all esports so I can enjoy watching it much better. Because when you understand it, that's where you're able to enjoy. It. If I don't understand, I'm just like, oh, there's flashy little guys going around yeah, blowing yeah. shit up and killing each other. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, that's a really cool mentality, though, because, I mean, esports is kind of, when we all support each other, it kind of helps all the scenes grow, and, like, I know on Reddit, there's a lot of the communities are really cool, they'll post, like, the StarCraft community will post when the League Finals are, the Dota community will post, they all post for each other, you know, to kind of give more coverage, that's really important mm -hmm. to help cross-pollinate, because I think if you're into video games, you'll, you, you can find more than one to get into, um, yeah. for sure, so you never, you never really tried to play any other game? Um, not, 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 nothing like League of Legends or anything. I mean, I dabbled in Counter Strike in high school, um, and I play count. I play Call of Duty casually. I played League for like a month and then just completely stopped. I was like, nah, that's <laughs> not. <laughs> it's like I'm good. Uh, so I mean, I I casually play things here and there, but nothing like nothing serious. Halo is the only one that I'm serious with. If Halo didn't exist, do you think you would have been attracted to a different esport? Like, would you have been playing a different one instead? Like, could you see yourself? playing competitive video games regardless of Halo's existence, or was it something very special about Halo that... Um, I, I think I would have competed regardless or tried to at some point. Um, I was really, really, really good at Smash before I started, or when I was competing in Halo 2. Uh, so I probably would have tried to dabble in that. I definitely would have played Call of Duty because where where I can shoot something and you know and virtually it, I I enjoy it it's yeah. fun I'm just naturally good at it so I would have dabbled somewhere but ha would I have been as dedicated as I am to Halo probably not okay so Halo does hold like a little special grip for you oh yeah um, okay so then if, the next question I guess is this is um like what this is kind of a, a hard one I guess but I want your best player of all time and your best player at any given point in time so like the person, the best player ever, in your opinion, and then 
if you had to show somebody who was a complete novice to Halo, it was like, show me somebody who is a god at this game. Like, mm -hmm. what what person from, like, what period of time? Like, uh, I think Ninja's answer was Snipe Down 08. Oh, 08 Snipe Down was a freak. Yeah, he was... Oh, 08 Snipe Down was a freak. <laughs> Eric, he, that was... He deserves that that whole breakout superstar thing because he was he was a monster back then. He would be he would be one of them. But God, that really is tough because I've been around so long. Like I've seen everything. I've seen H two Nated just absolutely tearing everyone apart. I've seen the same thing in Neighbor Strong Side. You know, there's there's so many people that you can name. Um, always snipe. The always snipe. That was the best in a way, hands down. That's just the way. I, that's what I think. Best player of all time. If we're not if we're not including you know placings or anything like that, um, it'd be between side, Ola. You know, oh, God, this is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is really hard. All right, all right. Either Ola or Borg. I'm a big Borg fan. Yeah, he's ridiculous. And I'm you know, I'm gonna go Borg. <laughs> I'm gonna go Borg. That I know. Yeah, I mean, everyone says, like, and, and I, I would agree, overall, Royal 2 has a lot of consistent moments where, like, holy shit, he really is the best in the game. Like, he's got to be, he's the best in the game. But Borg, just, something about Borg, I don't know what it is, it's just Borg's, Borg is just nasty. You don't want Roy to get mad, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to touch the Borg. You just want to let him do his thing and hope to God he doesn't tear your team a new one. Yeah, uh, his, his shot, especially in Halo 3, was just so ridiculously consistent. Like, he just didn't miss. It honestly felt like he was like had he. It felt like he was playing with hacks half the time because the guy just never missed shots. It was ridiculous. Watching some of those old videos. The machine, literally, the dude's a machine. Uh, and Much he, love to Roy. Yeah, him and uh, him and his brother Lunchbox are a, a scary duo. Um, so the changes recently that just got announced: uh, the hundred K season final, um, the rule changes for season two. Uh, what do you, what do you think about all these? Like, do you think it's good? Are the steps in the right direction? Very good steps in the right direction, and, and I think I think it was planned. I really do think that the whole prize change multiple times was planned, but it was it's a great step in the right direction. People like to watch high stakes, uh, you know, games. Anything high stakes, people like to watch, and that's why that that double increase to 100k is so huge. Not only does it give us more incentive to you know keep going, but it gives everyone else really like, these dudes are playing for a hundred thousand dollars playing Halo, a video game. Let's go watch that and see what it's about, and. Um, Let's see. What was, the, what was the second part of the question? Um, it was a plan and then the rule change, right? Yeah, the rule changes. That was important. Too much controversy, and then people getting screwed over with uh, the old rules. And the, I read over the new rules, and it's a much, much better step. We need that consistency. We need something that's going to give people a fighting chance and kind of compensate for the whole momentum crash that happens when you're up 4-0 in a flag and got to restart the damn game over, you know, completely from the beginning. Yeah. So I, that's another good step in the right direction. Do you think that um, they need to do a little bit more? Like, are there anything else that they haven't addressed yet that you would have them address? Um, there's things that I, I've spoken with, I've spoken with some people about that I know they're considering, and I, it's been addressed. Nothing that's immediately imperative, but definitely one thing is, um, like I said, people like to watch high stakes games. So overall, prize money increase. I mean, it may sound greedy, but it's hard to like people. They just like big numbers. You know, it's easy to promote and market big numbers, so that's one thing that would uh, really help us out. And of course, we need to do our own. To just keep doing what we're doing, stream, and be more positive. Yeah, I think I think we're good from there. Yeah, that's that's uh, those are all would all be positives for sure. What do you think about like the the roster ad drop and all? Because there's a whole bunch of controversy around mm -hmm. this all too. So, like, do you think they need to fix this? Like, how would how would you fix? Would you go back to individual points for each player and then have those be contributed to the team? What What do you think? I think that that's the best way to go, the whole individual points thing. Um, I, I understand the whole, uh, you know, add drop transfer period. You know, you lose your points if you do this, that. I, I get it's meant to create consistency, but now with there being orgs coming in, contracting players, and the fact that, um, I know for a fact that, because uh, I've read the rules, that ESL does not directly interfere with the owner, with the org and the players. So if you're not going to interfere with the org and the players, why would you be the one that's controlling the limitations of the roster? They give the players the individual points, let the orgs handle the limitations of roster changes. You know what I mean? But that's that's a very black and white way to look at it. It's just what we're looking at now. I mean, there's multiple uh, options, I'd say, multiple ways we can approach things. But I, if we're looking at uh, one alternative as opposed to another, I think individual points is better. Okay. 
Um, all right, so I guess we're we'll go into like the the final question. I like to end these with uh, like a hypothetical. So, um, aliens come down and they abduct you, they steal okay. you, and they tell you that they don't like your team. Like Arcanum, we don't like the guys you're playing with. They were mean to us. They we've heard them joke on stream about aliens having green heads. We don't that they're dicks. We don't like them. So <laughs> you have to make a new Halo team to. Uh, Play Halo against these super aliens to defend the human race. Basically, you have to win. So, mm. who would who would be your Halo super team? Like, if you had to pick three players to save the human race, play against these super aliens, who would they be? You can't use your team. Oh God, that's hard. So I can't I can't use anybody on my team. No. Wow, that's a tough one. That's a really good one. I like that. Um, can I can I give two options? Two, sure. two roster options? Okay. So my two options would be um, Borg, Lunchbox, and probably Lethal, uh, and then myself, or me, Lethal, Borg, Ryan, Oob. Oh, okay. Those would probably be the two rosters I'd pick. <laughs> so you'd split up the, uh, the twins, eh? Uh, I would, don't want to, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> I kind of have to right now. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, I think that'll. I think that's going to be basically it. Um, do you have anything else that you'd like to say? Any shout outs like that? Yeah, um, definitely want to give a big shout out to Noble um, and all of our sponsors: Custom Config, Esport Control Freak, um, Esportsify, Elite Coin, Origin, Cinch Gaming. Everyone that's kind of helping us and supporting us get to these tournaments and really. I have something tangible to work off of a good base. I, I appreciate all the support. Everyone that's a fan of Noble Black or a recent fan or you know someone that's watched um, myself for a long period of time, thank you so much for supporting us. My parents ain't going to see this, but hey, thanks, guys. I love you. You're downstairs and cleaning all the snow off and of the house and stuff, but I love all of you. Halo community, love you guys, and uh, let's, uh, let's get Halo big again. Sounds good. All right, well... Um... At least for the last part of this episode now, your Twitter will be right under you. I've had, been having overlay problems and everything like that, but hopefully I can get that fixed for the whole episode as well. And also everything, all of his social media, his YouTube, his Twitch, his Twitter will all be in the link below. Um, subscribe for more videos. Follow him. That's it. Later, guys.